Hello, it's Joe Glines, and in this video we're going to demonstrate a couple of the different tools you have for um, for helping with assisting with web scraping. Uh, basically how to how to find and identify specific spots on a page. Uh, I have three different versions of, of kind of the same tool, they're just uh, different points in time, and then I'm going to talk through, play a little bit with the developer tools in IE, which of course are in Chrome and Firefox as well. Um, Firefox, especially with Firebug, is, is really helpful. Chrome's pretty good. IE, just because I'm always using IE for the most part without a hotkey, um, I, I'll use that, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. But they're they're all very similar in how they work. Um, just some of them serve up the information a little better than others. All right, so let's get going. So uh, on the forum, and I'll put a link to it, but um, you can find... An, Unfortunately, the um, the only one that I can find that's still reliable is an executable version. I don't have the actual auto hotkey script, but you can uh, you can find it on there. And this is this IWB2 learner tool, which has a terrible name because it's impossible to say fast. But um, you can and it, and it works by just dragging things around. Let me refresh this page. I, for some reason, another script I was using uh, left it highlighted. That wasn't this one, that was a different tool I was thinking about featuring, but decided not to. Um, but here you can see, you can drag it around, you can see the data. What I... It, overall it works fine, right? It has it has a lot of information in it. Here's the, the index, the tag names are up here, the the um, the name if it is present, or ID, has frames, the inner text, outer text, you can see the parent structure and stuff. This is, um, for the most part, this is the core that'll be in each of these tools that I demonstrate. However, let me show you, like, when you get onto a bigger item, let's go onto something that has, yeah, let's, let's get bigger, there we go, bigger. Then you start seeing how in here, and every time you click into it, by the way, it copies to the clipboard, but when you're trying to read through this, right, it, it, it's, t one is, f for my eyes at least, this is getting pretty small, um, but it makes it, to me, pretty hard to look at this stuff. Um, it's got a lot of room here for frames, which is great, and actually that it has frames is, is very convenient, because they are, they are, they suck. That's all. No nice way to put it. Um, <coughs> tools easy to use, but let me show you. So what I did a while ago um, was I had um, actually there were two of this, and I should have looked up the name before I did this. I I think it was Romnick, something something close to that. Um, let Let me demonstrate here before I got out of it. So see when we go out like to <coughs> I'm changing the zoom, let's say to 90, and now when I drag the the things don't line up anymore. So that is that is one of the issues with this tool is you have to be at 100%. If you're not at 100%, let's go bigger too. And I go back and drag and it still isn't right. But if I zoom back to 100, I'm just scrolling in and out with my mouse. Um, then, it, then it's spot on exactly what I want, which it's a nuisance, but it was never that big a deal. But um, I had posted something to the forum and, and someone actually um, ad adjusted that. And then when they did that, I also said, you know what, this has always annoyed me how small these areas are. Uh, I never use this index because it's while it's sort of interesting, it's it's not reliable in any way for web scraping purposes, and so I'm going to launch this version. And this version, you can see size-wise, right, significantly larger than the old version, right, the original version. Um, and what I did was I moved, I got rid of this index, and I spread out the name and ID. Uh, th these parts are still the same. The um, and, but I made the the spots for the inner text and outer HTML much larger, right? So so it's it's much easier to see. It's still, of course, if you're looking at the whole page, you don't get everything. However, it's much easier to look at a lot of it. The other thing that the other person um, took care of is the zoom level. And so now, when I even though if I get out of let's say I'm back down to ninety percent, when I scroll with this tool, it's it stays accurate. And I just looked up real quickly. Um, let me see if I can get back to where. I left it. Oh, here we go. So, Romek. Rom... Yeah, I can't say that. Rom... Sec. <laughs> um, on the AutoHotKey forum. He uh, he also added in this... this he, he, I think... My guess, I haven't talked to him, right? But my guess is he has a smaller monitor. And so he, he liked having it where it's trans somewhat transparent. And to me, that, that drives me insane. And so um, I suggested the compromise of, like, why don't you build a little radio checkbox, and then we can just choose very simply, right, if you want it transparent or not. Um, so that was this version, and again, everything is the same as this last one. We can show the parent structure, right, it all works the same. And uh, it's nice because now you can zoom in and out, but what I, I realized was, you know what, I do a lot now, if there is no name or ID, I like getting the class name. And of course you can look down here and say, oh, the class is this, 
right? And one is just, I'm lazy, so I don't want to do that. But the second one is, for people who are new to this, it's great having that broken out the same way name and ID are. And so, in this third one, which I was just working on, um, it parses out, I, I did a little bit differently where I, um, I got rid of, because I just didn't find this URL, while it's interesting, I can look at the damn URL, right? I, you know, it's it's interesting, but I don't need that. So what I did was I, I borrowed that space, instead of making it bigger, I just took that over. And now when you're using this, actually, let's see, here is class. Um, oh, oh, I was, it's funny, I was looking here. So see how class name is put up in here for you, right? And it also gets copied to the clipboard, you can see it down here. Uh, but, but now, class name is readily available where I don't have to go look in the HTML uh, for it. And so that's what I'm playing with now. The other thing that I was doing, and I should almost demonstrate it um, just as it was interesting, is when we say show structure, I, I clicked that, and I think it's actually showing somewhere, and I got too many things open. Um, I don't know what's going on. Alright, so, I've, like I said, I've been playing with this. It um, it displays the structure and shows you names and IDs. Um, I made a tweak to it, and I had it showing the class names, and so I'm thinking about building that where I would have a second one showing the parent structure of class names above it. I thought that'd be kind of cool, um, just to help get more and more unique. Alright, so those are the three learner tools. And then let's, actually, I'm going to leave this open just so we can demonstrate it. I'm going to minimize this. And on here, I'm going to hit, on the on Internet Explorer, I'm going to hit F12, which, I, you know what, let me, let me, so you can hit F12, which will drop you into it. However, um, probably a more convenient way is when you're over the thing you want, you can right-click and say inspect, right? Oh, and of course, put it on the other monitor. Here we go. So when you do that, and then you got to get back to the DOM Explorer. So now I, I thought it would have left me there, but let me let me go ahead and because it is convenient when you when you're on the right thing and I say inspect. But, and this is the reason why I, I I choose to use the other tool. The requested element is no longer attached to the DOM. Yeah, okay. Um, well, you can also click here and it works the same as the other tool, right? And you can see where you where you are on the page. Oh, mercy. All right, let's load, reload the page. That That's a debugger function, which um, should not be breaking on. All right, so I, I finally got it working. I, IE was doing something weird. Um, but you can click... Oops. Now why does it go away? All right, anyway. So let's say I click here, and this will jump over in the DOM Explorer and show you. Here it's input. The class is button class example, and that's when I use this tool also. See how button class example is right here for you? It's isolated, and it's not somewhere where you have to look for it, especially when there's a lot of stuff. It gets very confusing. Um, oh, I can hit Control B. I didn't know that. Let me try that. And there we go back into this debugger. I, I don't I don't know why the debugger is kicking on all of a sudden. Um, there maybe there's something on this page that um, has an error. But let's get back to the DOM Explorer and using name. And so she, see here how it says name is name example, but um, in this tool, right, I can just highlight it this way and see name is name example. They're both pulling it from this outer HTML, right? Regardless, it's just how it displays it. And that This is the HTML, and you have to look for it, um, which, of course, you could do here, too. But the fact that it's, you know, parses it out for you when you're new to this or just in a hurry, it's it's very convenient to have it that way. Now, the one thing I'll say the developer tools have that these tools don't is a way to see also, um, when you click on something, what happens. Like, let's say I wanted to determine if this is actually doing, you know, a specific API call where I don't have to do all the web browsing stuff. I can click on network here, and I can watch what's going to happen. So when I click this button, oh, and it goes back, and of course it triggers a debugger. You know what? All right, that's, I'm done with that page. Um, let's go back in here, and let's click, get rid of that. Now we'll fire back up developer tools. I think... Um, one of the, here we go, clear, cut. oh, that was not what I wanted to do, I wanted to clear the screen, here we go, I think it's this one, there we go, so now, and we're on network tab, when I click, um, let's go to the forum, here, 
where did my developer tools go? <laughs> Sorry, the developer tools disappeared for some reason. But you can see the network traffic. You know, it always happens when you're trying to record a video, right? Things go wrong. But that that's the way the tools are, right? They're not they're not paid tools that you're spending hundreds of dollars for. They're free things that people built. Um, but when I let me let me clear this again. And now when I click here, the damn debugger comes up again. I'm I must have set a preference to turn on the debugger. Um, I'll have to go look at it because I was, I was looking at some tools. But you know what? Here, let's do this. Let's switch over to Chrome, and I'll demonstrate it in Chrome, which hopefully doesn't have the same issues. And um, it's again, it's the same. It's virtually the same. So I just brought up the developer tools. Um, actually, in this one, I am on the network tab, and now when I click something, you can see all each of these is an API call, right, to go get data from that server. And this is what's interesting is you can see exactly which call was done, what it was, um, how long it took, the the size of the file, um, and it can be very informative, especially if you're trying to figure out what was actually passed to the server, if you're trying to deal with your credentials and things. So the developer tools are pretty awesome. And then the other thing I noticed was uh, in, in Chrome, I don't think IE has it, or if it does, it, it presents it in a really confusing way. But if you... Um, go to sources and this event listener breakpoints what you can do let's go back here what you can do is say I want to break on a mouse ev any every mouse event and so what's going to happen now is when I click over here it see how it says paused and debugger and I think I think that's what I actually was setting in IE and trying to get it to work and that's why it's doing it now but then I can start stepping over um, what happens when I click the button and seeing what what JavaScript calls are happening and what things are going on and that way if my clicking of buttons um, if my click function doesn't work this can help me understand if there's certain events I need to trigger so uh, that's it that was a crash course in some various tools there are other ones out there um, I, I find the, uh, the this learner tool um, to be uh, just the most concise it, it gives me what I need in you know in a, in a small format without too much too many other things thanks